of friends, but I wasn't super late by any means. Uh, I know some people who started swimming club when they got to high school, so I wasn't <laughs> that late by any means. But so I'm from El Paso, Texas originally, and if you don't know where that is, that's the furthest west point in the state of Texas. It's like at the very tip uh, out west, and there's not a whole lot of <laughs> um, – green scenery out there it's pretty dry but yeah i grew up swimming for this little club team called wet uh west texas typhoons i guarantee you none of y'all have heard of them <laughs> they're really small and when i was in middle school i decided to move to dallas to go swim with the club team out there and that was the first time i was kind of surrounded by you know a group of really 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 elite club swimmers and it was a big culture shock for me because if you compare swimming in Houston to swimming in El Paso, it's <laughs> no comparison. I mean, I remember as a little kid going to tags and you would always see the Houston club teams and the Gulf LSC by the names. And I thought it was the most intimidating thing ever. I thought it was so cool being able to say, you know, you're from Houston and you swim in Houston and Houston's always produced some of the best club programs, some of the best swimmers. And you know, as long as I've been around and way before, my time. So a lot of y'all are really, really lucky given the position you're in and definitely don't take it for granted. But yeah, tie that into going to sectionals, going back and forth with fleet. And my last like year and a half of high school, I moved to Austin, Texas to come swim for a club team out here called Nitro. Do y'all know what Nitro is? Oh, I guess everyone's on mute. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure some of y'all are familiar with Nitro. And I swam there towards the tail end of my high school career and ultimately got recruited to go swim at the University of Texas with Coach Eddie Reese. And that was probably by far the biggest blessing I've had in my swimming career. He's just such, I mean, as, as much of an accomplished coach as he is, he's just a much better human being. And he, I've learned so many lessons from him outside of the pool and what it takes and what it means to be a great swimmer inside and outside of the pool. And yeah, I've just been very fortunate with that. And I graduated college a few years ago and I'm currently swimming uh, professional here in Austin with Eddie still. And yeah, just having a lot of fun going through uh, the motions. And it's a weird time right now, as I'm sure y'all know, <laughs> not being able to train, it's pretty difficult, but just enjoying the little bit of rest time that I'm getting right now and can't wait for things to start back up. Well, could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now? Um, you know, obviously you're, you're not in the pool. Um, you know, what type of training are you doing right now? Yeah. Uh, good question. Right now I'm just doing a lot of dry land work on my own. Uh, I think that's about to the extent that most of us can do. Um, so just, back to the basics, you know, a lot of push-ups, sit-ups. I actually don't really have anywhere to do pull-ups right now. So uh, I would love to kind of include those, but I just have some TheraBands that I use to and do a lot of shoulder stability work with that. But uh, going on walks kind of here and then too, mostly just to get out of the house, but still stay away from people. Um, but yeah, I've just been trying to do some active push-ups have been a big part of my regimen and uh, something I can share with you guys. If any of y'all, no matter how old you are, how old you are, want to do this. Uh, one of my favorite athletes of all time is a football player named Ray Lewis. And he's kind of known for doing this um, push-up regimen growing up. He would have a deck of cards and he would just, pull a card from the deck and say it was a six. He would do six push-ups, And throughout the whole day, he gave himself the uh, whole day time period to go through the entire deck of cards and just do however many push-ups he would draw from a deck of cards. So if he got a Jack, Queen or King, he would do 10 push-ups, and Ace was 11 push-ups. So that's just a little trick if any of y'all want to do a little bit of strength training. Fantastic. That also kind of makes it a little fun too. Great. Um, now you talked about your, um, you know, making your way through 
um, the age group program, you know, getting into high school. Can you talk about your high school experience a little bit? And then what, what the recruiting experience was like, um, you know, making your decision to go to the yeah, high school was a lot of fun. Uh, my high school career was a little crazy, given I, I kind of moved around a lot. But that's really the first true experience that you're going to get that's going to simulate a college swim team atmosphere and just being so close with a group of people that, you know, you're, you're competing for your school, just kind of like you compete for your club team. Um, it's it's kind of very similar to that, just on a different level. and. Uh, yeah, it's learning how to really kind of buy into a true team environment to where it's not all about yourself. It's about the person next to you and doing your best and also trying to help the person next to you become the best they can be and just vying for that state title or trying to place the highest you've ever been at state and putting um, yourself in a position to make the team better. Fantastic. And, and can you lean again on the, the recruiting piece? Like what made you, what was the decision um, that you made or, you know, what, what allowed you to make the decision to, to go to the University of Texas? Yeah, um, it was hard for sure. It was, it's a very scary, difficult, stressful time. I'm sure if there are any juniors, seniors here, you can probably attest to it. It's not something that I think everyone goes through and they're like, oh, that was easy. Um, it was, yeah, it was pretty scary for me just knowing how big of a decision it's going to be. But ultimately, uh, I found the most trust in Eddie Reese. I looked at his resume. I compared it with everyone else. And to me, at the end of it, like after it was all said and done, it was almost a no brainer. And, you know, with him, he really just preaches how at the end of the day, like he, he wants you to be a better swimmer, but he also wants you to learn to become a man and how it would be if you're a woman swimming on the women's team, Carol would want you to become, you know, the best woman you can be outside of the pool. And they really teach you a whole lot of life lessons outside of the pool. And also, I think a big thing that goes along with it, too, is studying and learning how to balance the college workload on top of the swimming workload. And you definitely that all that you learn in high school and in middle school and below like growing up trying to balance this full club schedule you have along with school like it's honestly it's not a whole lot different um at the college level it's just a little harder schoolwork um but the workload's not a whole lot different than what some of y'all are going through right now that's why like learn how to study learn how to prioritize your time right now because it will help you out so much more the older you get that's <laughs> probably one of the biggest things i can relate to everyone here fantastic um, so can you tell me about, um, you know, obviously you graduated from the University of Texas. Can you talk about your transition to becoming a professional athlete? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a pretty hard adjustment at first, just because for so long I was regimented on, you would have practice in the morning and then for majority of your day basically is kind of filled with school and schoolwork and all of a sudden you know, after morning practice, the gap I have until afternoon practice, there's really nothing there. Uh, it was kind of empty and I, it just, it felt pretty weird. I mean, I'm always used to going to class, um, like just doing homework and doing schoolwork was just such a big part of my day. And now all of a sudden I just have all this free time, which is <laughs> kind of a shock to me, but uh, I just learned to, you know, I, I was given all this extra time throughout the day. And then I thought, well, how can this help my swimming because now swimming is my full-time job now it's not balancing it with school so now I really prioritize um extra strength training and recovery and nutrition are such a big part of um just who I am as a swimmer now and all of that goes into training like training is not just inside the pool it's everything you do outside of the pool at this point too and if it just means trying to recover from a morning practice to an afternoon practice or recovering from an afternoon practice till practice the next day. It's, it's a pretty full-time job, <laughs> but yeah, it's been fun. Uh, the one thing I do miss is competing for, you know, my college team. I, I miss that more than anything. And uh, yeah, it, it was, it was fun for sure. Like those four years I had at Texas were the best four years of my life. And I still train with everyone 
at the University of Texas still. I just can't compete with them. And see them going off to dual meets, going off to conference championships. It's it's still pretty hard just because, you know, I want to be there fighting with them. I want to be there fighting for a team title and trying to help them out in whatever way I can. But, uh, you know, it's not my job anymore, but I, I miss it for sure. I'm just also enjoying this new part of my career as well. Fantastic. So you talked a lot about team culture um, with the University of Texas and, and the love that you have for the team. Um, and I think that kind of falls along the line. That, that culture really entails. Yeah, so um, there's, I think someone from one of the other colleges out there was talking to one of their friends and said, man, I wish someone liked me or loved me the way the Texas swimmers kind of love each other. And it's something that uh, a lot of us have kind of learned earlier on. And again, all starting with high school swimming and club swimming and just learning how to develop that team atmosphere and really caring for one another. And also uh, a big part for me was, being on the junior national team, like getting on there for the first time, they really kind of show you uh, like firsthand what it's like to compete for Team USA, to compete with a group of people representing something that's way bigger than yourself, which is, you know, at that point, it's representing the United States of America at <laughs> such a young age and how to buy into one another. And that really kind of is translated all the way like each year that I've gotten older and older it's the lessons that you know we were taught back then that still hold true today and you can tell um, there are definitely a, a lot of people on the national team who were on the junior national team for so long because they were so successful at such a young age which I was not <laughs> I ended up learning these a little later than them but uh, yeah everything that they've kind of taught us and you know we have a lot of great mentors on Team USA. We still have guys like Matt Grievers and Nathan Adrian who have been swimming since probably some of y'all were barely born, <laughs> little babies, but they've taught us so much. And just guys like you know, Ryan Murphy, who I'm sure most of y'all know, he's the best backstroker in the world. Uh, he's really taught me a whole lot. And I've been very fortunate. I've known him since we were 10 years old. And he was, I think, almost as good as he is now back then. I think he held nag records all the way from when he was 10 years old to now holding the world record in the 100 backstroke, which I don't think I've ever seen someone be so consistently dominant throughout their whole career. But yeah, it's been super cool. And again, uh, everything that I've learned now starts at y'all's point in life right now and just really listen to your coach when they tell you uh, just buying in together as a team that really, really holds true the older you get. Not even in swimming, just even in the work world too. Learning how to just come together with the people around you can just make tasks in life become a whole lot easier than just going about them on your own. Fantastic. So can you talk about your experience at these international competition competitions? Yeah. What is it like to put that black flag cap on your head what does it feel like to be behind the blocks when you're representing team usa oh man <laughs> it's it's for sure the the coolest feeling that i've gotten and uh, i remember the first time i got my team usa cap it wasn't my last name on it i was on the junior national team we just got a a flag with or a cap with an american flag on it but it was again probably top two coolest feelings that I've ever had in my life, just getting that American flag for the first time. Cause you know, when I was a kid, like growing up, I mean, just same, same as y'all Phelps has been around for so long, but just seeing all those people at the Olympics wear that American flag and just know kind of where it starts. And it was kind of like the first step of, you know, one day, hopefully trying to achieve that goal. And it's, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. It's, not easy, but I, I think having pressure at that level kind of shows that you care a whole lot and that, you know, you want to do well for something that I said earlier, that's a lot bigger than yourself. And, um, I don't have Olympic experience yet, but it's something that, you know, I think all these little 
competitions leading up to it, like World University Games, Pan American Games, and uh, stuff like that ultimately help prepare you for a moment like that. And just knowing that, you know, when you're behind the blocks and you hear your teammates going crazy for you, but they do a USA cheer before you dive off, it's probably the biggest adrenaline rush <laughs> someone could ever get. So um, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, hitting some of these big meets and, and, you know, accomplishing some of your goals, um, just making these teams. Can you talk about what your goals were like for 2020 and, and how they've changed in the last, you know, couple weeks here and, and what you're looking for for 2021? Yeah, for sure. It's, it was definitely a pretty stressful time leading up to the decision to postpone the Olympic trials and the Olympic games, but, you know, I've been doing this for quite some time now and, uh, 2016, the last Olympic trials didn't really kind of end up the way I wanted to. And I definitely got a lot of motivation from the last go around. And I just view it as we have another year to get better. We have another year to train hard, another year to get faster, get stronger. And I think if, if you approach it the right way, this can help out every single one of you. I know the season probably ended before you wanted it to, just just like me, but I'm just really glad that I have more time to train, more time to get better for uh, this upcoming Olympic trials. Uh, I think if you look at it at a positive way, it can just do nothing but help you. Now you you touched on, um, you know, your experience from 2016 at trials. Um, you know, obviously swimming is well and maybe not hitting some of those. Oh, goals. also real quick before I, I just want to make sure is my. Well, fuzzy, if you're able to connect. Okay. Let me, I have two, let me go ahead and see if this makes it better. I'll be five. Seconds. Like I said before, okay. I, I, you mentioned not having the best experience from 2016. Uh, can you kind of talk about, you know, what that looked like a bit more? Yeah. So, uh, if y'all don't know to make our Olympic team, you have to place, um, first or second at our Olympic trials. And obviously I think for anyone swimming at my age, that's most everyone's goal. And I ended up coming just one place short. I was third place in the 200 meter breaststroke by a 10th of a second. So it was a little heartbreaking for me just seeing you know, the biggest goal of my entire life just come this close to making it and missing it by such slim margins. It was pretty hard on me at first, uh, but, you know, I just let that serve as motivation and fuel for me to train harder and get faster and come back stronger the next time I'm in that opportunity. And I know because uh, we, we train four years at a time for this. It's not like uh, this meet comes around once every year. We have to wait four years for it. So it was pretty difficult, but, uh, you know, in the end, I think I've learned so much from it. And I tell people all the time that, you know, it's the bad races that I learned the most about myself and how to improve on the next race rather than the good ones where it's kind of almost like a reward for training well, but uh, I feel like all the lessons I learn and how to improve come from the bad races I have. And, Ultimately, I wouldn't say it was a bad race. Um, I thought I swam well. It just kind of sucked that <laughs> I came so close. But again, I took a lot away from that and learned a whole lot about myself going forward. Fantastic. So, um, you know, with that experience in mind and you're, you know, going into 2021, you know, what are you going to take away and, and how are you going to apply that, that experience from 2016 to 2021? One thing I remember about um, last Olympic trials is I was extremely nervous. Um, probably one of the most nerve wracking meets I've ever been at in my entire life. And actually funny story. So I'm sure all of y'all here know what tags is. Uh, I think kind of up to the national championships for college or the Olympic trials, I think tags is probably the most nervous I had ever been before a race, <laughs> but uh, I, I, going forward, I definitely have learned to relax a little more and just kind of enjoy the moment because, you know, being able to be on a stage like that and swimming for something 
to such a great magnitude. Uh, I think it's also kind of cool in a way. And I've definitely learned to kind of embrace the moment a little more rather than just stress out about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just another race that we've done so many times and it's kind of hard. Like it's probably not a good idea to look at it any different because it's a 200 breaststroke that I've done hundreds of times. It's, it's not a different race that I'm not used to. So just and enjoying the moment a whole lot more is what I would say. Coach, do you have any additional questions um, for Will here? Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome that, uh, you know, you've gone through some adversity, actually, and uh, have been able to maintain a positive attitude. I think that's huge, and that's a huge lesson for us all to learn. Uh, you know, one of the questions I would have is, obviously, you, you're at the pinnacle of your career. You've gone through a lot of experiences. Um, has there been a time in your career where you've had some challenges uh, performance-wise and you've had to make some either big physical or technical changes? And uh, how long did that take you to get through it? And just kind of that experience and uh, anything along those lines. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I know exactly where to go with this. So the one thing I miss about swimming at y'all's age is, you know, it was kind of at a point where almost every meet you would get better and better and better. Or, you know, when it came time for golf champs, a champs, um, tags, or, you know, whatever the end of the season meet is for you, uh, just dropping huge amount of times. And it was almost kind of like you always got better each year after year, but kind of now the older you get, you realize you go a whole lot longer without going best time sometimes. And, uh, I've, I've gone three, four years without going best times in an event or just going like 0.1 of a second faster. And it definitely gets a little frustrating sometimes, but you know, when you're at that point, it's just those little drops uh, mean so much. And something that Eddie Reese, my coach has taught us, you know, the older you get, you have to work, you know, so much harder just to improve this much, but you know, at the end of the day, a drop's a drop. And whether that means, you know, you have to get stronger in the weight room or doing dry land or work harder in practice or just, you know, I've, one thing I've noticed that's really important the older I've gotten is sleep and just really trying to emphasize on getting a lot more rest after hard practices or leading up to another practice instead of wanting to stay up late watching a Netflix show or <laughs> play video games, just getting those extra couple hours of sleep really have helped so much with consistent training. I think it's consistent, good training that ultimately leads to performing so much better at the end of the season. Great. Awesome. Uh, one more question and then I'll open it up to the kids, but obviously yeah. um, I'm just curious your parent, parents support involvement kind of like, how are they and through the process as an age group slash high school swimmer? Yeah, I've, I've been very, very lucky and blessed with parents who have had total support of what I've done. Uh, again, to the degree of <laughs> we moved cities for my swimming to that degree. And they've always been just so supportive of what I've done. Uh, it's, there was kind of never an issue where they kind of forced things <laughs> on top of me and as long as you know i was happy with what i was doing and just kind of loving swimming that was kind of the most important thing for them involving myself uh, they never really pushed me to you know perform well or kind of go to practice well i mean i guess you kind of always have to go to practice but um at the end of the day like the biggest thing they wanted for me was to be happy and just kind of make sure i was set up in the best environment possible to succeed which is you know, moving to a program that um, y'all are at right now with Fleet. Uh, you're on one of the best programs in the state of Texas and the country. And you, you would uh, be surprised at how many young swimmers would uh, give up a whole lot to be in your position right now. Um, well, I have a question from one of the, the swimmers here. At what age did you realize that swimming was your thing? And did yeah. you practice? other sports um or has it only been swimming 
So I kind of got a knack for swimming early on. I definitely was never the most dominant swimmer by any means, but I, I did pretty well at it starting at around 10 years old. And kind of from then, I just stuck with it. But with me, no, I never uh, kind of seriously pursued any other sports. I kind of wish I may have when I was a little younger, but ultimately I just tried to do what put me in the best position to succeed at this one. But plenty of my friends have grown up dual sport athletes playing other sports and then usually around my high school middle school decided that they were just going to stick with one sport but that just varies person to person great thank you um humberto for the question um if coach is okay we'll go ahead and, and open up some of the questions to to the swimmers absolutely that's what we're here for fantastic so um we're gonna go one at a time if you have a questions please unmute your mic uh, try not to talk on top of each other here, um, but we'll go ahead with the first question. No, some... no, I have. What is your question? Okay, go ahead. I was gonna ask. <laughs> All right. What? How about? Coach, do you want to pick the swimmer, or yeah. Wendy? Would you want to? Or I mean, I can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go, well, go ahead, Will. You can do it. Okay. Um, let's see. Looks like Sarah Brown has her yeah. mic unmuted. So if there's a question, oh, perfect. I'll go with her. I was going to say. You don't know what you were going to say? No. Okay, I'll go ahead and mute you. We'll go ahead. Anna, Irvin, why don't you go ahead and ask a question? Hi. Um, okay, so what type of advice would you give, like, a, um, like a student going into college, like a student athlete going into college, because that's what I'll be doing this fall. Awesome. Well, uh, congrats on making it that far. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, where are you going to school? Uh, University of Arkansas. Awesome. That's a great program. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing I can give you is your study skills that you've learned now. Uh, don't change those. If anything, just prioritize school a little more because uh, when one or the other, like if school starts to fall behind, it definitely affects your swimming a whole lot. And then that will in turn kind of affect your schoolwork. So it's kind of a system of checks and balances. When, if you can keep both in order, like I guarantee you, your life will go so much more smoothly and it'll just mm -hmm. make things a whole lot easier and way less stressful on you. But yeah, just enjoy it, have fun. I just really cherish those four years because people always kind of told me that, you know, it goes by so fast. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear that all the time, but it really does. Um, your freshman year is going to yeah. fly by and your sophomore year is going to go by faster than your freshman year and your junior year will go by mm -hmm. faster than your sophomore year and so forth. Thank right, you. Uh, yeah, no we'll problem. have a question for you from Lincoln. Uh, did you ever consider going to any other school besides Texas? Yeah. And he also said, hook them. <laughs> okay, awesome. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. Um, I took uh, six total recruiting trips. Uh, my very first recruiting trip was my junior year. Uh, I took a, an official visit to the University of Notre Dame. Uh, I actually grew up a big Notre Dame fan as well as a Texas fan. So that was my first recruiting trip. And then uh, my senior year back when I guess we started getting recruited as seniors versus I think it starts as a junior or a sophomore now it's crazy but I went to uh, Cal Berkeley was my first one Georgia was second USC was third Wisconsin was fourth and Texas was my last trip and yeah I just ultimately decided on Texas and you know I haven't looked back since and yeah hook them. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic Noah uh, uh Please unmute your mic. I understand you have a question. Why didn't you choose the University of Wisconsin? Um, you know, I I loved it too. I actually really enjoyed my trip. Um, again, it, it wasn't an easy decision for me. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I just personally felt most comfortable with University of Texas and uh, just wanting to swim under Eddie Reese and just be with that group of guys and fight for a national championship with them. Uh, again, like this decision's not easy. I don't think it's easy for many people, um, but 
yeah, nothing against the school. I absolutely loved it. I think that might have been one of my, my top two favorite recruiting trips, actually. We went to a little uh, like farmer's market across like downtown that kind of looped around the Capitol building. And I remember having uh, these things called cheese curds, which are like little fried cheese balls for the first time. And they're actually delicious. <laughs> they're probably so bad for you, but they're so good. Um, so the next question I have in the chat here, uh, it is, um, did you make varsity your freshman year? Yeah. So, um, I did make varsity my freshman year. I swam for, uh, a high school in Plano, Texas called like Plano senior high school with, um, we actually had a pretty good high school team back in the day. I think our four by 100 free relay broke the state record. I was not on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I was very lucky too. And uh, I was surrounded by a bunch of really, really good older swimmers. And yeah, I think that record was broken. I want to say last year, two years ago by Southlake, but uh, that's probably one of my favorite memories was just watching those guys break that state record. Fantastic. Uh, Noah has a question in the chat. What was it like yeah. trying to balance swimming and school during your high school year? It was challenging for sure. Um, again, kind of like I told you that everything that <laughs> you learn in high school kind of ultimately sets you up for learning how to deal with it in college. And that was the first time where I really, really had to prioritize uh, schoolwork um, each day just to make sure I wasn't going to bed at two in the morning and having to wake up crazy early for morning practice. So yeah, that's what I learned back then in high school. Great. Um, so another question um, from Sophia, what's your best stroke and your favorite event? So Sophia, uh, my best stroke, I would say is breaststroke for sure. Uh, it's kind of something I kind of got a knack for when I was a young kid, but actually fun fact, my first best stroke was actually butterfly <laughs> when I was swimming summer league, but uh, first best stroke was butterfly, but actually my first state record was i think the 400 freestyle um hopefully i can beat it since then i was 10 years old but <laughs> yeah um, favorite events the 200 breaststroke by far i love it uh, i love all the components of it i love that it's kind of more so of a tactical race than most and i just i actually love racing it <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a lot of great questions in the chat here he said uh somebody has asked were you really good when you were younger or did you get better as you got older? Kind of both. Um, I, I did pretty well when I was an age grouper, but kind of, like I said, I was definitely never, you know, the best overall swimmer, but, uh, it's just something that every year I just tried to get better than the year before. And, and funny story. I tell people this all the time. So, my first tags, I was nine years old, and I remember racing this guy from Houston. He swam for the Woodlands. His name's Gray Umbach, and I'm, I'm sure he still has a bunch of state records, tag records, and stuff because the guy was an absolute monster when we were growing up. And in my eyes, it was, uh, you know, Michael Phelps here, like Gray Umbach, <laughs> right here. Gray was just so good and absolutely destroyed me every time we raced, and. I first raced him when I was nine years old in the 200 IM and he beat me by 25 seconds. <laughs> and kind of every year after that, I just made it a goal to get closer and closer and closer and closer. And I never beat him until my sophomore year of college, starting from when I was nine years old, but it was definitely kind of something that I just always strove towards. And yeah, I was, I was okay. Uh, but definitely not, uh, not to the point where I am now. I, I think I definitely approved a lot in college and yeah. Um, Ryan has a question. How often do you do meets? Probably about the same as it was in high school. I mean, some months can be two meets a month, sometimes once a month, sometimes once every couple months, definitely a little more frequent uh, when I was in college because we'd have a bunch of dual meets. But uh, I would say on average, like once to twice a month, probably, yeah, it almost like alternates one month, one, one month, two, one month, one. Great. 
Um, Jude has a question. What was your worst injury during your swimming career? Ooh. Uh, my senior year of high school, I had really bad shoulder tendonitis. That's one. My senior year of college, uh, I pulled and strained my groin pretty bad. That kind of sucked because I couldn't kick and it actually hurt to walk for quite a bit. And I'm actually uh, going through like a little bit of a shoulder issue right now. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, I guess I'll kind of add that up there with it too. But it's kind of nice having this time to rest uh, my shoulder by not swimming. So I would say that's, those are my three. Uh, you know, some people I know have had shoulder tears. Some have had uh, torn uh what is it? I think there's a labrum in your shoulder and your groin too, or something like that. But uh, yeah, it, it just kind of varies from person. Got a few questions. What is your least favorite stroke? It varies. Um, recently, I think my, I wouldn't say least favorite. I mean, I actually, I'm an IMer as well. So I kind of train everything. I actually pre train predominantly freestyle, but uh, butterfly has given me a little bit of trouble lately. Um, it kind of fluctuates between butterfly and backstroke, um, but kind of in like February and March, actually everything was kind of being nice to me. So I would, yeah, the, the last stroke I'd say was butterfly. Before then, uh, I'd say backstroke. Great. Um, so Bella has a question. What kind of music do you listen to before meets? Ooh, I hate to be a downer with y'all, but I actually don't listen to music a whole lot at competitions because my my college coach never really wanted us wearing headphones or listening to music at meets because he kind of wanted us involved and with everyone. So uh, I don't really listen to music a whole lot, but the times I do, um, I like I like Migos a lot. Actually, uh, I don't listen to hip hop a ton compared to most people. Uh, I actually love country music and I love like the earliest 2000 music, like Blink-182 and stuff. So I'm usually listening to that in my free time, but at meets, uh, not really a whole lot of music, sadly. I just have kind of followed that ever since college. Uh, so here's another one um, that we're getting hit quite a bit. Who was your role model? And to follow it up, um, do you know Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Um, let's see. You know, most of my like role models, just in general in sports, were <coughs> kind of athletes in different sports. But if I had to pick one, I would probably base it between three. Uh, I won't be cliche and say Phelps, but I think Michael Phelps, like definitely everyone idolizes him. So I won't give that one um there was actually this swimmer i don't think any of y'all would know who he is he was his name's darian townsend he was on the like south african four by 100 free relay in the 2004 olympics and that was the first olympics i ever really watched closely and i actually i don't know why i just really took a liking to him and ended up meeting him at a swim meet and he was one of the nicest people ever so i'd say he's definitely one um, I actually loved Aaron Pearsall a whole lot growing up. He's greatest, probably American backstroker ever. And then actually one of my best friends on my high school team growing up, he was three years older than me. He ended up swimming at Cal, but, uh, I don't know. I just kind of idolized him a whole lot. And those would probably be my swimming idols. Um, and, and um, I've met Michael Phelps before. Uh, it was at like 2015 Nationals, and I actually had a great experience. He was the nicest guy, and I vividly remember us. We were in the ready room before the 200 IM at 2015 Nationals, and most people were just kind of in the ready room with headphones on, like their hoods on their jacket up, just kind of zoned in. And I was actually kind of with him in the corner of the ready room, and we were just kind of laughing telling jokes and we were actually talking about golf because I love golf and so does he. And I just remember that until, you know, the heat before us finished and then he's like, all right, man, good luck. And he just switched modes, got into game mode and almost broke the world record next to me and just absolutely destroyed me. But it was awesome. <laughs> um, so can you talk about your 
uh, pre-race routine? Do you get nervous before a race? Yeah, I, I for sure get nervous. Um, our diving coach at the University of Texas always has this story he tells that I love. And he talks about before he would compete, how he always knew he was going to do good when he got those kind of butterflies you get in your stomach. And when he would get nervous before a competition, he knew he was going to perform well. And uh, I kind of found the same thing too. Uh, I know getting nervous isn't fun. <laughs> I don't think a whole lot of people enjoy it, but I definitely know when I kind of start to get those nerves flowing that I'm probably going to race. All right. Not necessarily go a best time, but for that point in the season, I just know I usually swim a little better when I get nervous. Right. Um, what advice would you give for someone about, about to go into college recruiting? Um, how, how can someone try and get noticed by colleges? Yeah, I think the best thing you can do is just consistently just keep working hard every day and listening to your coach. Um, also, don't be afraid to reach out to coaches. Uh, if you're like me and you swam for a coach who's a little older than most, he definitely tends to forget things a lot. And actually, he was the last person to recruit me because he thought I was younger than I was. And I remember getting a call from him a few weeks into recruiting. And he was like the one coach I wanted to hear from. I never heard from him. And he finally called me and apologized because he was like, oh, I thought you were going to be a junior coming up. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, I'm definitely going to be a senior, Eddie. But yeah, definitely uh, just keep working hard every year and really just, I know sometimes it kind of sucks hearing your coach tell you these things all the time, but they're your coach for a reason and they're in the position they're in for a reason is because they're good at what they do. And especially a club team, like fleet um definitely listen to them they they know what they're doing they've sent countless amounts of kids to the college and just yeah keep staying open to them verbal with them and work hard and all the coaches will notice you um so this is more you know after training here type questions do you take naps after morning practice and, and does this help you with you know reco your recovery process yeah, um, I, I used to take naps all the time after morning practice because I'd be <laughs> so exhausted. Uh, sometimes if I have a lot to do during the day, I won't um, just so I can kind of stay productive. But I, when I was in school, uh, definitely if I didn't have an 8 a.m. class, I would try and sneak one in. But uh, it kind of varies now. I'm probably about 50-50. I'll just try and make sure I really get a good night's sleep beforehand. But if you can take a nap and – you won't miss any school and you don't sleep in class, I would say go for it. But I actually, uh, I hated almost falling asleep in class and I would try my hardest not to. So I was definitely not a big sleeper in class, unlike I think every single other person I know. Uh, here's another, uh, what's your favorite swimming set? Oh man, there are a lot, a lot of painful ones. Um, there's one we do every New Year's Day. Uh, we did it New Year's Eve this past year. And we do 2050s Butterfly on a 35 second interval, which is pretty challenging. And uh, a lot of the team doesn't make it. But it's, it's kind of cool to do something like that. And especially me, I'm not a butterflyer, but it's always kind of cool to see, you know, how many you can make and uh, my goal was to make all 20 of them every four years, which I ended up doing. But after you hit about number eight, <laughs> it gets really hard because you're, you're not getting a whole lot of rest and sure, you know, butterflies hard enough as it is. And your stroke kind of ends up getting like, we call it chicken wingy when you're just bending your arms so much. That's one of them. And then, uh, I did that <laughs> set breaststroke last year and I actually kind of enjoyed it. Um, so outside of the sport, what, what do you enjoy doing? Ooh, I'm a, um, if you talk to any of my coaches or teammates, I think one thing they'll tell you about me is I'm kind of like a social butterfly. Uh, I just love hanging out with my friends. Um, I value my friendships, you know, probably more than most things. And I would say just hanging out with friends. Uh, I love sports too. Like I told you, most of my sports role models were with 
other sports, but I, I enjoy, I love watching college football. I love going to Texas football games. I love watching basketball, Texas basketball, and I love golf too. So definitely sports and hanging out with my friends and I mean, video games, of course. Great. So uh, we're wrapping up here. Um, can you leave the, the swimmers here with some tips or advice? What, what would, what would you like them to take away from this conversation today? Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll answer that and I'll try. Like, there are a couple of easy questions I'll try and I need just help. Tally through really fast. <laughs> you need help? Were you talking to us? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay, got you. Yeah. Um, so I'm 25 years old. Uh, right now, I, um, I did work the Longhorn Swim Camp. I do. Uh, I actually still do every year, except I guess this year, I don't know if they're going to do it. So if you're there, come say hi. Uh, I don't bite, I promise. Um, and yeah, I guess the biggest thing I would say is really enjoy the moment that you have right now in front of you. I think some of my favorite uh, moments in swimming were honestly going to tags. I love tags to death. Like I told you all, it was probably some of the most uh, nervous times I've ever had at a swim meet, but uh, I think just being able to kind of make it through that really taught me how to deal with the nerves of going to like my high school state meet, going to college dual meets, going to college championships, going to college national championships, and then you know ultimately international meets and Olympic trials and stuff. So, but just really enjoy them. Uh, some of my best friends I've made were when I was 14 and under when I was in high school and yeah actually, I actually I miss those times so much um yeah just really really enjoy them and just at the end of the day have fun swimming that's the biggest advice I can give you um swimming is a whole lot easier when you show up to practice and you want to be there and you're ready to work hard rather than kind of showing up and just kind of dragging and just know that um kind of like your energy kind of feeds off the people around you too. And um, two of my favorite teammates, their names are Ryan Hardy and John Shevitt. And what I love about them is every single day, no matter how hard practice is or how bad we're broken down middle of season, they're always laughing and goofy and telling jokes and singing during practice. And it really just kind of helps lift the spirits up of everyone around them, especially me when I get <laughs> really tired. That's great. Coach, is there anything you'd like to say before we uh, head out here? Mostly just thank you. It was, uh, it was a lot of information. I think the kids got a lot out of it and uh, we just really appreciate the time. It's, it's uh, been great to have some uh, social time for these kids as well. So we really appreciate it, Wendy. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today for Fleet Swimming. Fleet Swimming, thank you so much for uh, logging in today and, and talking with us. We hope you guys were able to take something away this afternoon. Uh, we hope you all stay safe and we hope to see you on the pool deck very soon. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, everyone keeps staying safe and um, yeah, listen to your coach and listen to your parents. Okay.